Today we will create a bell kind of sound from a champagne glass just uh, by taking it and recording when you flip your finger against it like this and uh, we will be recording this and we will learn how to use round robin on uh, that uh, so every time you hit a note you get a different new recording and the sound we'll be creating by doing all of this and learning how to use sampler is this check out the little de demo here I uh, put together for you of the sound shall we? To get the sound we of course have to record it first so uh, we take our champagne glass and just flip it with the finger to get the sound. Now because the transient is pretty loud at the beginning I added a little bit of compression here and a little bit of um, EQ to remove the muddiness um, in the lower frequencies. Just uh, take a look at it here. We have a lot of uh, low frequency content in the transient that we don't want. Uh, this is the already recorded uh, signal. I um, I uh, prepared this. But what we are going to do in this tutorial is uh, we are going to record more than one. I'm going to record another one and another one and another one um, to get our round robin effect. All right, let me do this and I'll be back in just a second with a few new recordings. Here are the results of my recording. Well, that's weird, hearing yourself uh, with a slight bit of delay. All right, uh, here are the results. That's the first one we recorded. You already heard that. And now the other ones. Uh... And the last one, it's a little bit heavier. I don't know if I want to use it. I don't think so, so I'm going to delete it. And um, since uh, we don't want a perfect result, this is just for the sake of showing you, um, I'm not going to use more than this five um, recordings here. If you really want to be sophisticated, you could use as many as you want. Um, so uh, to get our round robin effect, we of course have to take um, all of these um, uh, samples we got here. We have already processed them and I added this one uh, to make them mono even though they sound good in stereo. I do want them mono because technically it's a mono signal and we can process them later to make them stereo again. It just uh, gives us a little bit more um, possibilities later and we don't have to look for phasing issues or anything else. Alright, let's freeze the track and uh, flatten all those samples. Now uh, let's uh, Go ahead and consolidate every single one so we can normalize them again. Uh, right, just going to select zero here on every single one. So we got the same approximate volume on all of them. Of course, we won't really get the as perfect volume match here, uh, but that's what we're going to do later uh, manually. So now what we're going to do is uh, we are going to take a MIDI track, I just created one here, and we're going to drag the first one in here. Now we can play it um, as if it were um, a normal synthesizer. So. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use uh, this first one here as a template for all the other ones. So we have uh, only to drop the samples and all, and all the processing we want to do is already done. So let's up the release a little bit because there's all, uh, it's, it's already a sound that re doesn't really have a uh, release. It's more like a attack and then a decay phase here. So uh, let's up the release um, to really hear that. All right. Now, um, that sounds pretty good. 
uh, but that's the one I used uh, before. This is the one we uh, just dropped in here. Sounds good, but um, we have to do the following. We have to find out in what key those um, hits here are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the spectrum here and we are going to take a look at, uh, at this uh, spectrum here and see that this is a, a C sharp, almost more a C than a C sharp. This is, this is um, a C sharp. They all have to be C sharps because the volume of the uh, glass didn't change. I am not drinking when I, while I am recording this. <laughs> uh, now uh, let's remove this and go back to our uh, thingy here and just up it a little bit because it's um, it's closer to the C than the D and we really want it in the middle. And um, what I'm now going to do is uh, transpose it down one uh, semitone. So the C, uh, when we play a C, it's really a C and not a C sharp. So it's compatible with other in instruments. And because I don't like it that high, I'm just going to transpose it an octave uh, uh, below. So uh, instead of minus 12, I have to write minus uh, 13 semitones because we don't already uh, we already transposed it down one uh, semitone before. Now this is our template. Let's uh, group this up and let's uh, show the list. And this is uh, really, really helpful because what we're now going to do is we are going to du uh, duplicate this five times. Now, what happens now is if we press some of them, all of them play at the same time. Later, we won't, uh, uh, we don't want that, but uh, for now, that's uh, pretty good. So we can drop all our uh, different samples in here. This one looks a little bit like it isn't really starting at the right time. Let's, uh, Check the others for that issue too. Yeah, uh, we want the transient at the beginning. Uh, this one is right at the beginning. Perfect. Now let's take this one, drop this here in, uh, check the beginning again, and the last one. We're going to drag this here in, and now we got all those samples playing at the same time. Of course, that's not what we want. What we want is um, that um, one of them is randomly selected. Now, how can we achieve that? Well, we could, for example, um, choose the velocity here and um, select all of them. And now we can right click and say distribute uh, ranges equally. And we could drag in a MIDI effect um, and uh, we're going to choose the velocity effect because we want uh, to um, change the velocity. I'm going to uh, select uh, 64 here, 64 and 63 here and choose the randomness of 64. So every time we press, You can see another um, or a, a random, um, a random one of those in the chain is selected, and there's never uh, more than one selected. You can see, choose uh, a pretty high value here. You can see this uh, marker. Let's press it again. This one to uh, choose a really low one. This one, this. And this is basically what round robin does. It chooses a sample um, randomly. Um, so you basically have a more uh, natural sound because if I were to hit this um, glass every time I would play it, I wouldn't hit it in the same direction. And this is what we are um, simulating here. Now, the next thing we have to do is uh, we have to change the volumes of uh, our um, Chains, uh, so they all uh, come at roughly the same output. So I deactivated the velocity effect. Let's uh, use this one for reference. Well, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm just going 
to um, undo this so uh, they all play at the same time again. Let's uh, put on accent here. Now this is a little bit um, quieter than this one. So let's bring it down. This one is loud. This one is too loud. All right. Now we can again bring a velocity effect in here and choose all of them. Choose again. Uh, distribute ranges equally. Take this one to uh, 64, this one to uh, 63. So we got a line in the middle. Put up the randomness. And now we got a problem because if I play, well, of course I have to unsolo it, but. Our instrument is still uh, velocity sensitive and um, to get rid of that we uh, of course have to disable the, uh, that, that, um, that um, mapping to the uh, volume of the, the, uh, the uh, velocity. So I'm going to turn this into a sampler and I am going to go ahead and say the velocity effect has to be zero here. And I'm going to do this for every single one. Go to the filter and global setting, go to the uh, amp envelope and uh, take the uh, modulation source of the velocity for the volume down to 0%. And this is uh, the last one coming up here. And turning it into a simpler and bringing it down again now. They are all the same volume, approximately. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a compressor on here. I just changed the attack of the compressor here to uh, 0.6 milliseconds, so uh, just sounded better to me uh, personally. And um, now that we're done with um, editing the signal here, we have to um, we have to um, say, or well, I have to say, we of course um, sacrifice the the ability to um, to um, to use uh, the velocity here um, for the sound um, to get this round robin effect. Now, if we wanted, what the hell is going on with my MacBook? The, the fan is just going nuts right now. I don't know why, I, I am not even doing anything right. Uh, I'm just talking. But um, if we wanted to get that uh, ability back, we could um, go a more complicated route and basically group this two things here up uh, in another instrument rack and basically again um, duplicate this let's say a few times here oh, how many times is one two that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten no one two three four five six seven eight eight all right and it's eight times now um, let's uh, Use this for minus, uh, it's minus eight, minus seven, minus, uh, whoa, minus six, minus uh, five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus two, uh, minus one decibels. So, um, and uh, now we could go ahead and again use our velocity uh, thing here and uh, select all of them 
and distribute the ranges equally. So now. You got your MIDI uh, velocity expression back, but of course you now got um, five sam uh, sim samplers times eight um, instrument tracks here we are using. And if you wanted to use more, you could even do that. Um, that's of course a lot of um, samples loaded into your RAM um, or on your hard drive that have to get um, read by Ableton. But of course you have the possibility here to use your velocity again. And what you even could um, is, uh, for example, for the higher ones here, use um, instead of uh, those samples here, use uh, samples like this one that are a little bit more aggressive, a little bit louder. Yeah, if you compare this. So uh, you could actually uh, not record five um, samples like we did and um, map them in here. We, you could, for example, record five for low, five for medium and five for high velocity. And then you have had uh, three chains in here um, that you could um, basically map to, again, five different samples with the same velocity trick here and uh, this to get a velocity accurate um, samples so uh, you have different samples for lower velocities and different samples for higher velocities of course you could do that um, i'm not going to go into my, that much, de uh, much depth today because uh, we are already at like 20 minutes or something and um, i'm just going to do one last thing um, i'll be back in just a second here i just took a little bit of time and recorded the short melody this is what it sounds like here Now, um, what I did is I um, just played it in here and I experimented with a little bit of processing and what I found out is um, that a little bit of soft clipping really does wonders on um, this, um, this sound here. Let's just hear it with a little bit of soft clipping. Now, first off, it's a lot more compressed and um, that's uh, basically uh, bringing that sustain, uh, not the sustain, but the uh, decay part a little bit up and almost makes it like sustain part. And then it um, gives it a little bit more punch, but also flattens out the transient because the transient before was really, really uh, loud and uh, I already try to tame it with a compressor and we already had a compressor on those uh, samples at the beginning when we recorded them. So we really did some quite uh, much to, to tame those transients, but this uh, soft saturation really does wonders here. And what I did then is uh, put my trusty ping pong effect here on them. And a little bit of reverb. and the flutes from the last video. Thank you for watching. I'm going to make this series now where we are just created in the last video I made um, this uh, this flute. Uh, in the current video you're watching we made those belts and let's see what we are going to do in the next video. Maybe a little bit of percussion, maybe shaker or something. Uh, I'm just going to use household items and create a song of that and you can watch me do that. Um, all right, um, you no, just this, this idea just kind of popped up in my mind because I I don't know, I just made a break, I just wanted to make a short melody for the intro. Um, 
and that's uh, this one you you just heard and then I just loaded up somehow uh, the old uh, thing with the flutes uh, we did yesterday yeah, what was it um, I guess it was yesterday and um, yeah um, let's see where this goes thank you for watching I hope you had a nice day I hope you liked the video and learned something and uh, that's it I'll see you around <laughs>